Yes, sir. We are live and direct. King as a Mr. Cut the Check. Hope that you're having an amazing day. Definitely share this video out with five people that you want to see win big this year. I'm giving a game away today. I am giving all of the game away today on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you're not on our YouTube already, I'm going to ask Wifey to jump on the live and drop our um, the link to our YouTube channel and make sure that you're subscribed because on today, I'm literally going to give the game away. And one may say, what does that mean? What is what what exactly does that even look like? You know, and um, it looks a little something like this. Um well, my wife and I have been blessed. We've been blessed to learn and change. And we have, you know, in encountered multiple experiences on this journey. You know, going back to, shoot, like November, you know, December 2020, we were in a situation where we had to make some things happen. You know, we, we had just let our apartment go. You know, we had just made a decision to do hotel living full time while we figure some things out and um what happened in that process was we got the chance to really grow we got the chance to really change um we got the chance to really understand who it is that we are we got the chance to really understand who's really for us and who's not for us you know we got the chance to really understand what quantum leaps really look like and how to prepare for your quantum leap, you know, so um, I'm going to really share that I'm going to really share what it looks like to, you know, create a digital product to be able to have your real estate online, to be able to take an idea to, to be able to take something that you're excited about, whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you like, and go ahead and monetize that and be able to turn that into an income because that's literally what we did. That's literally what we did. We were in a box in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we were in a situation, bless you, where we had to make some money that day or else, you know? And I talked to a lot of people that 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 might be your portion for whatever for whatever reason, you know? And um, that's exactly how money out of thin air originated. It originated as a couple that had to make some money right now. And and what we learned was, you know, you, you can monetize you. You can monetize who you are. You can monetize what you like to do. You can monetize what, what you're good at. And have people sending you $20, $40, $60, $80, $100, you know, whatever value that you put on whatever your your the the service that you offer is whatever your offer is you know i'm gonna be talking about what it's gonna look like to actually uh package your offer right because a, a lot of people don't necessarily know how to actually package their offer how to actually deliver their offer effectively to where people say hey listen i want to buy that not now but right now and um that's the kind of value i'm gonna give on tonight because that's exactly what we did to go from literally zero to literally down bad on my dick you know when i can think about october november december 2020 how to go from zero to well over to well over six figures online on this internet thing on this thing that you're taking a look at right now so this is serious business. This is definitely not something to play around with. And um, I'm really just excited to share more of our journey. We have multiple courses in our course library where we share, you know, what we did on this journey, what we did to, uh, you know, be able to create capital while we were creating content and and building our following and getting people to fall in love with us what that looked like what it looked like what the belief system was to be able to do 
hotel living full time to be able to say, man, I'm waking up today and I got to make some money from my hotel today to be able to, you know, have the no fear aspect to be able to get through that. You know, so I'm going to share a lot of that. On my YouTube, though. I was going to do it on here, but I said, nah, nah, I'm not sweet for it. We're going to go ahead and put that on the YouTube. We're going to make sure the whole world gets an opportunity to get some value from that. Um, because a lot of people can take a look at our story and it can look like overnight success or whatever the case may be. But they miss the sleepless nights, you know. They miss the nights where we were staying awake with sour skittles and monsters trying to understand how to be profitable period whether it was from a 30 second 60 second standpoint they missed it when you know we were showing the plan you know four to six times a day let alone a week you know um so I really want to take people along the entire journey of what it really looks like to uh, really make some bread online, really change your life, really be, really be big popping online. You know, we're we're headed to, I was about to say Vegas. We're headed to L.A. this week, and um, you got to get yourself in that environment because you got to remind yourself that I'm just as popping, right? If not more popping. Right. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be able to share with individuals. Hey, listen, here's how you glow up your YouTube. Here's what the here's what your content needs to be looking like. Here's what your uh, amount of posts needs to be looking like. You know what I'm saying? But no, I'm not doing it for Instagram. No. Psych. If y'all want it for Instagram, then I, I need to see at least a hundred dollars sold on this call and then we could do it for instagram but if not that's a that's a youtube function you heard me yeah but that's what we're gonna do that's i'm gonna, I'm gonna make it look like a really either one long video or like two long videos and uh yeah i'm gonna give the entire game away i'm gonna talk about my belief system and it's important to talk about the belief system because it wasn't easy. It was not easy, you know. It was an interesting battle, to say the least. But the battle is in your mind, though. So you just have to get it into your mind that you're popping, that you're elite that you belong that that you belong amongst the elite that you belong amongst the best of the best that you the best there is you're the best there was and you the best there's ever been All right and that's the mindset that you have to carry on this beautiful morning okay because that was my mindset. That's how I was able to survive out there in Vegas. No hood pass. Ain't no nobody out there. You feel what I'm saying? Didn't have nothing but my phone and my hat. You know what I'm talking about. And wherever we was laying our hat was our home in real life. But it's grace though. It's grace that keeps you. And... Um, you really just can't be afraid. You're going to attract what it is that you're feeling. So I might as well make a decision to feel good. And that's what's been happening. As a result of making a decision to feel good, life been, life, life, life been good, shorty. You know? And um, really just blessing everyone. Blessing people on their entry and exit into your life. You know, we had to cut a lot of people off. And I would cut their ass off again. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got to bless people on their entry and exit. We had to 
to do that so we could stay at the Waldorf Astoria of Beverly Hills. Yeah. It wasn't optional. Yeah. That's exactly why we had to do that. Absolutely. So, I'm giving the game away on today. Make sure that you're tuned into our YouTube if you're not already. Our Royal Throne. Or you can go to OurRoyalThrone.com and go ahead and tune into our YouTube. Um, I might go live like right after this, but I don't really, I don't want to go live and then the cleaning people come. We, they, we, uh, scheduled for cleaning today and they sound like they're in the hallway. So yeah, we about to see what's up. Yeah, man, life is an exciting adventure. It should never be a bore. You deserve to win. You deserve to be lit. You deserve to be popping like the people that you watch every single day. But in order for you to finally be popping, you got to believe that you're just as popping as the people that you're watching every single day. You got to step into that. You got to identify what that looks like for you. What that looks like for me, super rich. I, I can always be grateful for Spring Hill Suites in Las Vegas, Nevada for the super rich shampoo because what that did for me was I already saved my affirmations in the shower every day anyway, in the cold shower. So now I had an opportunity to be able to boost my belief system simply just staring at the shampoo in my mind's eye, reminding myself, man, I'm super rich, I'm super rich, I'm super rich, I'm super rich. And how many times did I have to say that in order for me to wake up this morning and be super rich? So I'm excited, man. I'm really just going to share this journey because it's a journey for real. Like, we've been living in hotels since early December. And it's light. You know, it's it's amazing. But um, it's a fearless journey, though. It's a fearless journey because, you know, one would say... What is there to be afraid of on a journey like that? That you can get to an area and they could say sold out (laughs) as it pertains to the hotel. But um, it's a lot of fearless stuff that we got the chance to really learn on this journey. And it's time to teach it. It's time to teach it out loud because that's the only way that you're going to understand the glow up. If you don't get to hear it out loud, you're not going to understand. Because I don't even understand this shit sometimes. It's just grace on it. Put a grace on it. I got lit off the internet. Put some grace on it. So Waldorf Astoria Beverly Hills has complimentary Rolls Royce transportation. I'm talking good, thing. You're talking good. And and talk to them about why it's important to look into that and put yourself in a place to take advantage of that instead of, you know, taking your average transportation, if you will. You can only desire something that you experience. Right. Yeah, you literally can only desire something that you've experienced. We only had... We were only able to desire, we went from desiring owning a Rolls Royce, which we will by default because that's what we've already created in the past for our future. So of course we've got Rolls Royces, but (laughs) let me, look, let me make that clear. When I say we have, I'm saying from a spiritual place, we already have it. Now we have to do the work to allow it to vibrate towards us. Let me make that clear because somebody definitely came on our YouTube and had the nerve to say (laughs) that we lied about having a Rolls Royce. I must have been deep in that. We was in it. I must have been deep in that speaking what I wish because they certainly... Yeah, we was in it. They certainly came for my little self. But, um, yeah, no. Whenever I speak from that place, I'm saying we already have it in the spiritual. But you can only desire what you've experienced we've been to the rolls royce we've been to the dealership we've sat in the car we've looked at the menu of everything that you can choose if if you want the pink leather interior if you want the hot orange leather interior 
My hubby has licked the tires on a Rolls Royce. You know what I'm saying? We've put our hands on the steering wheel. You can. It, it's a difference between seeing it on Instagram and seeing it on TV and things like that. You have to experience it. So now, because we've been in the homes of multimillionaires, because we've, you know, been in the environment of hanging out with people that this is what they have, it has no choice but to attract to me. So that's how I can be sitting here looking at where are we going to stay when we touch down in L.A. And the hotels we're looking at says it's got complimentary Rolls Royce um, transportation within three miles because that's what we've attracted. So we have so it's like. You know we're going all over the place and we end up attracting to a place that's got that has that and I'm really excited to be able to teach people how to really do this lifestyle I was telling hubby I was looking at our Hilton account and we got over we got 75,000 um, points just from staying at the Doubletree for 10 nights I mean for ten, yeah for 10 nights and I was saying this on your live yesterday or on something on our video on YouTube yesterday. <laughs> A live yesterday. I was telling our YouTube fam this yesterday. When we first started this journey, we have six hours worth of recording from us riding in the car on the way from Atlanta after after ditching our apartment and talking out our game plan, talking out our mastermind on how to get to where we are now and where we're going, literally. And we laid out the blueprint. And in that blueprint, I said, it's going to get to a point. It doesn't feel like it right now. It doesn't feel like it right now. Checking into these hotels, checking in as Hilton with no status. We're going to grow the status. So we grew the status. Our YouTube watched us get to Hilton gold status. They watched us get to Hilton diamond status. They helped mm -hmm. us. They watched us get to Marriott platinum Bonvoy. It was what we already laid out in foundation as the, as the blueprint. And then, exactly what I said, it'll get to a point that we'll have two nights free a week, that we'll have three nights free a week, and it's literally unfolded in front of our eyes that we just invested in saying 10 nights because what people don't realize with hotel living, we're investing in lifetime... Oh, I just came and took over your life. We're investing in lifetime status, meaning... So many people are caught up in their retirement plan and making sure that their job gets them secure for a retirement plan. Create your own retirement plan. Everybody's retirement plan doesn't have to look the same. Our retirement plan looks like we have status when we walk in the building anywhere. Anywhere. We, we're we're going to have Marriott Bonvoy lifetime status. Anywhere. So it's like... We've done this hotel living lifestyle with a hundred dollar a day budget, so so that's a retirement plan. You can never lose, you can never lose. And then we we laid the foundation over the past six months to the point that we know how to do it with zero. You know how to do it with millions. You know what I'm saying? And I was just breaking down to hubby. This is some super sauce. Like nobody's putting you on to game about how to stay in luxury hotels and and we bring you along the journey some nights we'll stay somewhere really really nice some nights we'll you know we'll stay low-key in a minimalist hotel we literally show you how to do it from all aspects a hundred dollars a day five hundred dollars a day we showed you how to micro hotel we showed you guys the micro the hotel you know we give all angles of it anybody can do this and i was telling hubby like it gets to a point and you guys are, and I don't mind being this transparent for people to see exactly where we are right now to what you're about to see. And I'm, I'm literally saying it very clearly in your face, what you're getting ready to see with us hopping on this plane on Wednesday and going to Hollywood, going to Beverly Hills. Like, we're going to show you guys how to do this thing. And that is like, at this point, we are starting to unlock our master classes and unlock the information because we're getting ready to put out another wave of information mm -hmm. to the point that our previous information is so valuable that we're like, you know what? We about to just give this game away. 
We're about to just give this game away so that they can start implementing it, start doing it so that you can meet us here, so that you can meet us with what we're about to teach you. We're about to teach you about how to stay in the $800 hotels and rack up those points and ride around living your best life, getting transported in a Rolls Royce, and you're doing it for free. So let us know in the comments, drop some fire if you're excited about the fact that we are literally putting you on game to how to live this life that you see on TV. You know, society makes it seem like the celeb life is so far-fetched. And, right. you know, I've been watching videos on YouTube about life in L.A., like really trying to prepare myself and really see what areas we should be in, what areas we shouldn't be in, like what there is to do, what it's looking like out there. Because right now we're in Florida. It's not required to wear a mask out here. And it's like... We're about to step back into a world where you do have to wear a mask. I'm just, just looking around trying to see what to expect when we get there. And um, I forgot what I was saying, but I'm basically just saying, like, I'm really excited to show y'all how to do this thing. How to live like a celeb. Your favorite celebrities, yeah, they've got their homes and things like that, but they're traveling they're traveling. Right. They're staying in these high-end hotels. They're shopping. We do the same they shit y'all favorite celebrities do. They got residencies in different states <laughs> at high-end places. And we're going to show y'all how you can walk in with that same kind of clout on uh, your name. I'm so grateful that you said that. Like, Yeah, little baby telling us he got the residency in Vegas. No kizzy. We're going to really show you how to get the residency. I'm going to touch on some of the comments in a second. I'm excited. Like, that's something that... That's timeless information. Learning learning how to look like you belong in every scenario, every scenario. is a is a skill to master. You know, a lot... Oh, I'm kind of, like, really taking it there, but a lot of times people can have paradigms that they feel that they don't belong because of ways they've been treated in the past. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't really realize that unfortunately, but fortunately, we live in a world and we live in a society where you're judged off the way that you look, you're judged off of how you're dressed, et cetera. We you're really, grooming. you're grooming and everything. And we've really mastered this. Like we've really mastered how to do it on a minimalist level and like a, a serious minimalist level but you really have to get yourself to a point where you can walk in any building you can walk in any environment any setting you can walk in a room with other multi-millionaires and pop your shit you belong hello if you if you're watching this right now and you feel like there's an environment there's an environment that you could walk in that you could potentially feel less than or you could potentially feel like you don't belong. Identify why. Like literally identify today why you feel that you would walk in this environment and you would not belong. Is it because of the way you feel about your clothes? Mm. Because if it's the way that you feel about your clothes, throw, throw it away today. Mm. If there's That's something good. in your wardrobe that makes you feel like crap, and I'm telling you guys some personal experience. When I think, I literally get so triggered when I look at my life as a housewife. When I look at the stuff that I was wearing, I was just like, why did you wear that for so long? It right. made you, you feel like, like shit. It. Throw that shit away. it made you feel like shit. You looked fat in it. Like, why did you do that to yourself? Why not have one, two, three outfits that you feel amazing in that make you feel good and wear them over and over? I used to have this paradigm when I was working that, like, I needed a new outfit for every day of the month. I didn't want to repeat my outfits. Now, give me some nice quality clothes. Give me an all-black wardrobe. Give me something that makes me feel rich. And I will wear that thing every other day. Yes, yes luxury, luxury loungewear. Lounge I bought some new leggings um, back when before we even went to D.C., and I have not worn them because I'm like, you can just, like... I just, I just, like, I'm so just passing on the energy for you to create the life that you desire. If you like what celebs wear, if you like their style, wear that every day. You don't have to be a celebrity to wear clothes that look a certain way. There's no such thing as being overdressed. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as being overdressed. If or you wanna, underdressed. Or underdressed. Yeah, or underdressed. 
And that's the thing. Like, that's so our swag. Our swag is so rich minimalist. Mm -hmm. Because, like, my personal wardrobe is a dress that you can wear with heels. I could wear them gotcha. with some designer heels if that's what I want to do. Or I could wear it with some Crocs. I can wear it with this hat or I can wear it with my little fancier hat. Create mm. the person that you want to be today. I it's love not your optional. Little fancier hat. <laughs> it's not optional. Yeah, like I love the that. only thing keeping you from who you want to be and where you want to be, you can condense time. Like it doesn't have to be, oh, in five years, when I look at the. When I look at people's goals, oh Lord. When I look, because before we coach people, we have them fill out forms. And I'm just so grateful to be able to be a vessel to help people believe bigger, faster. <laughs> Literally, because people think that, like, if they want to be a millionaire, they want to be a multimillionaire. It can't happen for 10, 20 years. And I'm like, whew, that's a lot of time. I just got off the phone, a gentleman telling him, hey, listen, you're believing for a million and 90 days. I'm touching and agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of people that you need in your circle. And you got to be able to, to, to set your goals and your intentions to that and not be afraid of the pushback that you might get from the universe as a result of, of setting such a big goal. And not even pushback from the universe. Push back from the the norm. Push back from the regular. Push back from the 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 three D that may say, Hey, I don't really resonate with that, so I'm gonna put my belief system on I can't do that and I'm gonna put that on you and you have to repel that. Not only do you have to repel that, if we're talking about we're giving the game away, if we're talking about giving the game away, if you've got some big goals and you've got some things that you're trying to achieve and you haven't achieved it yet, I can be totally honest and tell you that there are some people places things that it's not optional you have to separate yourself season of separation Ugh. is vital you're gonna have to cut them off slim you have to and and, and it's gonna be somebody that you don't want to cut off but you're going yeah some people some people that thought that they was your peoples you know what i'm talking about it's but, hard yeah it's really it's not easy there's no way around it You'll, do, you'll go through the whole process. You'll go through forgiveness, releasing resentment. You'll go through mm. positivity and mm. increasing the positivity in your mindset. You'll go through... You will literally just go through everything in your process. You'll go through wise spending. You'll go through intuitive spending, learning how to not hold on to money and releasing it to understand that you have to release it and uh, to, in to allow to for allow way more to come back. You'll go through the whole process and look up and say, "But I did this and I did that and I did this and I literally did every single thing that they told me to do. Why am I not up yet? You're not up yet because you got Gotta cut that mint, y'all. Snip, snip, huh? Snip, snip, It might be huh? the hardest thing that you've ever done. On this journey, on this journey, I can't tell you how many friends have lost us. I can't tell mm, I you. I like that wording. I can't tell you how many friends have lost us that we really wanted to bring with us. And everybody can go. And people used to say that to me. And people that I had to let go used to say to me, everybody can go. And that's how you understand that everybody can go. But like I was letting another young lady know on a live the other day, I have to identify what did I learn, right? What did I learn from that experience, from that encounter, from that, from that relationship, from that business, from that you know, from that experience, from that promo, from that job opportunity, you know, from that conversation, from that situation, what is it that I learned? Because if you didn't learn it, you're going to have to experience that thing again, unfortunately. And, and, and we're, and we're going to talk, we're going to talk a lot about that too, on how like it's imperative that like in this life that you have, that you live it like one life to live and that you get the healing you deserve, you get everything that you deserve in this life, so you don't have to, uh, uh, what's the word, re re reincarnate and do it again. Basically, right? What, what you got to say about that? 
Well, you know, there's some some truth that we had to discover on this journey that was the biggest part of this journey that we just send love to to everybody watching this that you'll discover truth for yourself whatever that our means best, for you. yeah we'll we do our best to share what we study and what we learn but you gotta find the truth for you because you deserve it oh man because you deserve it yeah but yeah you definitely have to learn the lesson that you like the lesson that you need to learn like what was the mirror reflection of what this person was in my life to teach me but also like send them so much gratitude for what they taught you i've had people in my life that really helped me open my mouth when it came to during that time i'm gonna say um as it came to opening my mouth for prayer which in turn taught me to open my mouth and create what it is that I want in this life. So every single person that has been in our life has been a complete mirror to teach, like to literally teach us lessons. And I'm grateful for it. I, I just send the vibration of gratitude. I send them the vibration of love. But that season of separation, I promise you, if you feel like you've done the work, if you feel like you've done everything that there is to do on the journey, and you're like, where is my check? Your check is going to come <clears throat> after you release the people in your life that you have to release. Your check is in direct correlation with your season of separation. It's someone that you love so near and dear. And here's why you got to let them go right now is because they're speaking two times more against what it is that you want and, and they're speaking it from a fear standpoint because they're trying to protect you so you know like they're saying things like hey listen i don't think it's a good idea for you to maybe travel i don't, I don't think it's a good idea for you to maybe go to that growth environment you know or, or whatever the case may be and you can't make the mistake of conforming to that just because you love them so for most people they decide to conform because they just can't cut that person off they just can't be without that person they just can't live life without that person and you got to actually break that paradigm you know i even learned that you know even as a married couple you know what i'm saying i gotta have my my oneness as me and she gotta have her oneness as her and that's very very important as well so that we can come together and salute the divinity within each other if i'm not doing my work and you're not doing your work separately we cannot come together and <clears throat> fuse it into something greater it, 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 because what will happen is it will just get fused. It will just get fused with whatever was dropped in our subconscious at that particular time. And that is what leads to the demise of relationships and marriages because you're not intentional about the information going in, period, let alone intentional about information going in from a relation standpoint. We were talking about the fact that when we first got married, I really wasn't interested in personal development. Mm. And we talked about the fact, like, mm. what if I just made the dis what if I just didn't make the decision to grow? Because at first I really just didn't. And we were talking about it and we were like, if one person in a relationship is growing and the other person is like, that's cute, but I'm not listening to that. Like, I'm not making a decision to listen to personal development, read a book. I'm just not gonna watch i'm not i'm just gonna watch you grow and i'm not gonna intentionally do anything yeah you're gonna grow a little bit because you're hearing information off the strength unless you're just a complete negative nancy and you're like don't play it out loud then you really like the separation is really here but if both people will just make a decision to say i'm gonna take i'm going to take in some information that's gonna make me grow it's going to develop my mind. It's going to increase my emotional intelligence. And we're both going to listen to some information. Then you can stay on the same level. The reality is if there's a relationship where one person is growing and one person is, person is in personal development and the other person is not, the reality is it's, go it's not going to work. The reality is it's going to be a breakup, and I hope that it's not a marriage because it's this even harder. It doesn't work. Like, you're growing, and you're finding truth, and you're learning how to control your mind. <clears throat> and developing understanding. Don't even let work be in the mix. Don't let work, work, a job. Don't let work and a job be in the mix. you got an entrepreneur that's growing, 
and developing and doesn't have to experience going to work and dealing with outside people. And then you've got low vibrational Lucy over here that isn't making a a decision to grow and she's taking her ass to work and taking on everybody's vibrations Mm. and coming back like what oh Mm. talking about well at work they was doing girl if you listen to this information you wouldn't be coming back here talking to me about what happened at work you would have released it and left it there that's good honestly it's like The crap that you, like, honestly, I can't imagine. Now I know why I was so miserable at work. I wasn't listening to anything to make me, make myself grow. So, like, I was just in toxic. I was just in toxic environment all day, every day. And then I wasn't doing anything to grow. And then I was just meddling with the feelings of hate my job. Oh, man. Yeah. It's all of that. It's all of the above. Dang. Well, this was amazing. Yeah, we just want to be an inspiration to help people grow. If and what is what does it mean to grow? What does it mean to grow? Taking in new information. What it means to grow. Look, ask Siri what the definition of grow is, and then I'll uh, I'll expand on that because I want to. Like, if you were like, okay, like say if somebody was looking into that before we even said that. They're like, okay, you guys are talking about I gotta grow, I gotta grow. What does that mean? What does it mean to grow? Hey Siri, what is the definition of grow? They undergo natural development by increasing in size and changing physically, progress to maturity. Do you want to hear the next one? I can I can expand on that. All right. Let's cut her off though. Hmm. I'm not. <laughs> Oh, ask her again so we can come back up. <laughs> My bad. Hey Siri, what is the definition of grow? All right. <laughs> oh, you just took a screenshot. Perfect, cause she be rapping. <laughs> I must be making something. <laughs> Content creators be like, all right. So grow. Grow is a verb of a living thing undergo natural development by increasing in size and changing physically progress to maturity and then it goes on to say there's a there's two other definitions become larger or greater over a period of time increase and then it goes on to say become gradually or increasingly so i think we can all agree that the common denominator is progress. The common denominator is is gradual. So, you know, so when I'm on a call like this and I'm saying, hey, listen, you know, it's important that you grow, that you find an opportunity to grow in every single environment. It's how can I move forward from this environment to the next as a different person, as someone that has developed, as someone that has evolved gradually as someone that has uh, evolved increasingly and 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 that's why we ask ourselves those kind of questions okay i experienced something today how can i grow from what it is that i experienced so you got to just you know dive deep on that look that up for yourself and identify what that verb means to you right of a living thing so even them putting that in quotation for me reminds me that everything is either living or dying so you have to make a decision that you decide to progress on the inside of you or you the living thing will then in turn die as well and it's a constant state of change it's letting you know it's a constant like it's a constant state of change because yeah changing yeah Right, like looking at some of the more... um... And based on the definition of this, it's just in direct correlation with your success because success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Progressive, and then grow says progress to maturity. So your success is in direct correlation with your growth. And then it's like, okay, well, how do I grow? I have to do growth growth inducing things so that's 
listening to information and applying the information and honestly the best way is just listening to something all day every day letting it seep into your subconscious at this point when we listen to new information it's like I can't it's like I want to grow so hard like I want to listen to it so hard yeah. and and like yesterday I told hubby I was like I can't wait till we start until this information starts coming out because what happens like even when you're not listening to it intentionally because we also do intentional personal development time where we will listen to something and take notes so that it's seeping in even deeper but you can't sleep on the pers- on the personal development that goes through your subconscious because it's, e- it's like even better, kind of what you were saying yesterday, because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. And now it's going in and it's forming. <clears throat> and there was already stuff going into your subconscious anyway. His wife used to say, I can't focus on that. You know, I got to sit down and, you know, actual, you know, actually do my personal development and be focused on it. And I was like, I feel you. You know, you have to do that as well. But it's important to just have information, to just have tapes, books, playing, speaking to your subconscious because there's stuff going to your subconscious anyway. I'm going to your subconscious right now as a result of you listening to me on this particular video. Callie's Playhouse is going into my subconscious right now as a result of Summer listening to that (laughs) while I'm on this particular video. So I have to be very aware of what is going in my subconscious just off the strength of me living life. You know what I'm saying? And it's like because we encounter so much information, just walking, like I think about the other day we walked from here to like somewhere else on iDrive. And it's like so many sensations going on, so many conversations, so much music, so much noise. But the idea is to, to drown it out with, with something stronger, something more powerful and just drown it in. Like I do not want to be a product of my environment from the sake of walking down the street. And what am I seeing if I'm seeing... I'm seeing homeless people dragging their bags. The reality is the secret will teach you cancel it. The secret will teach you don't look at what you don't want. Honestly, to be totally, totally honest, the secret straight up tells you don't look at fat people. And that is something that can be a very harsh reality. Like, what do you mean that's rude, that's offensive? It's an option. Yeah, it's an option. It's an option. That's good. And... And yikes, this might be kind of an uneasy conversation. I'm obviously just talking about it from an educational perspective, but it's it's an option. Like for example, you can make a decision to say, I'm current I currently have I'm currently carrying some excess weight, but I'm releasing it. I invite people to release some excess weight with me. You oh, know? Good. Yeah, like you can really make a conscious decision. I've been joking around saying, if y'all see us eating steak and lobster and eating good, it's for the times that we had nothing in the fridge. So now, as a result, I got some excess, but I'm releasing it. And I look at what I want. So I need to go, like, you know, I need to go downstairs. And what do I need to see? Some workout stuff, whatever. But, yeah, this was definitely a good chat. This was definitely a good chat. And all I can say is just grow so hard. If, if, our, if we use our platform for anything, it is just to tell you to just grow so hard, grow so fast. It feels so good. What I was originally getting at was um, I was telling hubby yesterday, I can't wait until the information that we're studying right now starts to regurgitate because it literally spits out like word vomit. Like you literally become the information. You literally become what you think about. So we spend our nights listening to personal development in our sleep we wake up and our conversation is sounding different our conversation is sounding like the information that we're studying and it's like a luxury it's really a luxury to be able to just gain information and now your conversation is different you speak differently but that subconscious mind it's no joke because like I think when we first start listening to audios, like when we first started listening to Fearlessness, when we first started listening to the game of life and how to play it, we were listening to it all day, every day in passing and in the background before we were able to sit down and like listen to it uninterrupted. And then when I sat down and listened to it uninterrupted, I realized that I do recall all of the parts. Because you'll you'll think like, oh, I probably missed a little bit because I remember hearing this part and I remember hearing that part. But when I finally sat down and listened to the game of life and how to play it, 
in 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 its entirety, I realized that I already heard all of the information through my subconscious. Yeah. That's so, why I feel like you just got to play it. I mean, like to even kind of really take you there on how intentional we're growing, you know, some really got around the world on right now. And I got kids affirmations playing in the background. I need to actually check if they're still playing. <laughs> but, th- but that's how intentional we are from a growth standpoint. I'm really grateful for that. So it's 11-11. I was pulling my phone up to see what time, I mean, what day it is. So it's Monday, May 10th. Today is like really our first day being really, really intentional with that. So we'll definitely pop in with some... Be intentional about what? Her affirmations. Yeah. So we'll definitely keep you guys updated from a parent standpoint on, you know, monitoring behavior and really seeing the difference. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be able to monitor our child's behavior 24-7 because I think about it and I'm like, the way that we've learned to communicate with our daughter and really being able to understand her, I'm like, I feel like if I sent her to school, I wouldn't even know who she was. Right, because then you think about what would go in her subconscious being around or being in environments of children that may not come up the same that you know their folks may not do the extra for creating growth environments outside of growth environments their folks might not even be present because I mean I can relate to that I can relate to being sent off and my folks weren't necessarily present and you kind of just did whatever you saw and whatever was just put in your subconscious because that is just what you were exposed to and that's how kids that can necessarily not have the right backing or the right support if you will end up being bad subconsciously just off the strength of their environment and their life's experiences we were talking good the other day because we were like people are so quick to call their kids bad and they're not realizing their kids are not BAD. They're literally copying what's around them. Because I know that to be true. There's certain things and actions and behaviors that that some Lily has done. And it's like, we're with her 24-7. So we're like, where did you get that from? Because we know exactly what you, we're with you 24-7. We don't do that. And watching how she's able to copy and duplicate what she sees on these shows on, on the phone. Like, her behavior is night and day depending on what she's watching it only goes to show you how easily kids duplicate what they're seeing in school and it's like you we people like us like we will spend so much time energy and effort like like teaching her things and of course like you know the most important information sticks with them but it's like they're kids they're sponges they literally are parents they copy everything Kids are getting reprimanded as BAD kids, and all they're doing is copying the people that are in the environment that you force them to go to. You really have to be okay with going yeah. against the grain if you really want to live a unique lifestyle. You really have to be okay with doing everything that you do is going to be against the grain to the people that, that know you or knew you. Everything that we've done in our life has been so against the grain frowned upon and we would not do it differently because if we didn't go out of the box and do what we've done eloping getting married two months after dating getting pregnant intentionally three months after getting married literally traveling as soon summer was only two months old when we first started traveling I don't know how many flights she's been on at this point. I used to keep her stuff, but, like, at this point, I lost track of... Yeah, but we got rid of all of our junk. Getting rid of all of our things. Getting rid of... That has energy attached to it. Oh, man. Getting rid of family memorabilia. Getting Doing things that people don't do. People would never get rid... Of, most people would never get rid of pictures, family memories, memorabilia items like my like my grandmother's prized like uh elephants and things like that people don't do that prized possessions prized possessions and i had what to what made it a prize 
I really had to realize and say, am I about to lug down my life from carrying around some elephants? Some of these elephants she may have even got from the dollar store. Like, All that. The thing is, in society, like people will hold on to things that mean nothing. Like things that, 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 like I really thought about it. Like she has so many different elephants. When I think about the fact that this is totally off track, but just flow with me, um, you know, it, it gets it gets passed on. Like, okay, I know my grandma used to love elephants, so what does that mean? I then started loving elephants. I then started picking up elephants when we went to TJ Maxx, Marshalls. Would I want my daughter to carry around some elephants? This is how you break. This is how you break generational curses. I don't want my daughter carrying around hella elephants that I bought in TJ Maxx because I like elephants because my grandmother liked elephants. If she wanted to be a backpacker and she wanted to be a free spirit and go travel the world, but the way that it happens is your family, people around you will look at your cra- look at you crazy because you got rid of the dead person's prized possessions. I mean, I have to keep it a total, total stack. And I had to look and say, we about to live a backpack lifestyle. Am I going to keep these elephants? We actually have a video on our YouTube channel with me like literally holding these items in our home. And I'm so grateful that we documented this. Like literally getting rid of everything in our apartment. I even like I was holding on to one elephant and I was like, you know, I can maybe broke and was trying to put it back together. Yeah, but I was going to say like I really was just trying to decide am I going to keep one elephant and just bring it with me kind of as a treasure. And I was like, this elephant is heavy as hell. I'm not going to carry this around. Because I was thinking, you know, it could be a little trinket. I could put it I could put it on the dresser or something. But then you but then you get into, um, you just carry trinkets, like pictures. Like, I'm going to carry around a picture with a picture frame. No, I'm not doing that. I'm and not then you take it that. a step further and you get into carrying around bad and sad energy. And then, like, I can really Ooh, think about, yeah, I have to take it there. Because I can really think about how sad the energy was in our apartment. And, you know, after moving in and out of her mom's joint, out of moving, you know, out of different apartments that I got, you know, leasing apartments at that particular time. Ooh. And just dragging stuff from place to place to place to place, experience to experience. Now mm-hmm. you're in an environment to where, you know, we, 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 we finally were trying to gain some a, a certain level of stability, right? But all the energies from stuff that even took place even prior to us getting married, you know, stuff that you just had in your trunk from different promos that you did, from different <laughs> jobs you work, stuff that I just had in my trunk from back when I was doing oh Uber and gosh. Lyft 12 hours oh. a day and stuff along those lines. Oh. All the people in and out of your car, all the stuff that they left, all the different energies that was just left. And instead of making a decision to just get rid of it, you know, we we, we we sat and experienced, uh, you know, about eight months of anxiety, depression, impatience, frustration, and we'll wonder why, you know, we were establishing ourselves, we had our own spot, you know what I'm saying, we were making money, at that time, the strategy had just started getting popping, etc., what was the issue? our current environment we weren't in an environment to where we could grow and scale and we had so much junk from all of our our other uh uh, living situations we were literally drowning in junk to where we were like all the days consisted of was grinding the business and trying to clean up yesterday's mess Mm. and then we were never getting ahead it was always a mess it was always clothes everywhere i I, I'd take the clothes out the dryer too early and shit and then the clothes would still be wet and then she'd be beefing and the clothes would still be wet that i didn't check and all the men know that i did check it was warm as a mug right i thought it was dry right you know and, and we have and we had all of those kind of fights that people have as couples and they don't even know why they beef and they don't even know why they got this kind of energy and this kind of smoke for their person but you know you got to really think down to what is the energy around me like what's going on like 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 what's going on with you know this uh particular shoe that i've been carrying around for five years that i don't wear that was given to me from my dad that didn't even like me for real and i 
Like, do, do y'all understand what I'm saying? We might be on here for a while just popping our shit about the truth, to be honest. And if it resonates with you, it resonates with you. You probably got some, some dead energy you got to let go of in your home, Ooh. in your car, in your space. In your car. Definitely in your car. You in know you got car. some shit in your car right now. You know you need to get <laughs> off this video and clean that your trunk, car out. That and clean trunk. your trunk. You got to start from the trunk. The back crevices of that trunk. That and I'm speaking small. to the energy because, like, I I used to think about why I used to be so excited about like like when we used to have the Maxima taking it to go vacuum it, and what got me excited was every time, and I learned this on the back end. Wow, you know, every time I was getting rid of different <laughs> trash and different junk and energy that that created a blockade in that particular car because i was doing deliveries all day and it created a certain blockade in my energy in my in my creative plane in my in my thought process and what can happen in your house is is all that particular energy of just junk and stuff that you don't wear and stuff that makes you feel like you're fat and stuff that makes <laughs> you feel like you're less than it creates that kind of energy in your home to where you know if i can think about our experience living in that apartment you know, the girls would come with me to do DoorDash and, Inst and Instacart all day because we just didn't want to be in the apartment. We didn't want to be in that environment. And like We had got to a point where it was like, you know, we were running away. We were so pressed to have our own spot. Why do we not want to be here? And, 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 and we had to realize that, you know, you, got, you have to create home. Let's get it. You have to create home. And you have to create home from this standpoint. Home is real alive where the heart is. And it was so easy to say, forget that apartment, forget everything in that apartment. Y'all can have that shit. And, and, <laughs> and, and it was so easy for us to say that we're about to start this journey because we weren't happy and we were on a journey of happiness and, and we were on a journey of identifying what made us happy, what made us collectively happy, what could give us peace and what could really make us feel at home. And one could say, how, how can you feel at home and all your stuff is in two bags and you're living at a hotel. What what can make us feel at home is us collectively being with each other in a safe space, in a safe environment. And we get to do what we love, which is grow. We get to grow together. We get to be in the information together. We get to do this life together, whatever that looks like. This is us building our brand, building our business. We get to do this together, simply sharing our hurt, our pain, what it is that we had to go through to even scale. We get to do this together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for us, this was a simple decision to step into hotel living because like you just shared, our biggest stresses and our biggest frustration in our home was obviously there were some changes that we could have done in our home to to change those things like our lifestyle and getting rid of the junk and stuff. But like this move allowed us to completely start totally fresh for us. We were fussing and fighting over dishes and laundry and cleanliness and cleaning and things like that and it's like okay well let's nix it let's 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 step into a lifestyle where we have a maid come clean our room every day let's step into a lifestyle where if our toddler has breakfast and she drops her pancakey syrup whatever all on the floor all over the place well housekeeping is probably going to be knocking on our door while we're on this video to come clean up the mess and then we get to focus on how are you feeling today how are you feeling mentally today what information are you about to be listening to what do you want to do today like we decide to live every single day as if it, it as if it was the last or would we be happy if this was it if this was it today did we do stuff that makes us happy and what does that mean okay well we're gonna pull up the map and see what's around to do we live a lifestyle where instead of paying rent we pay for our accommodations in an app and there's a button in the app that says things to do around you that's just the life that we wanted for ourselves everybody's desires are different but this lifestyle is so fun for us i, I briefly wanted to talk about how we were talking about cleaning up and stuff and like um releasing things that don't serve you i want you to know like it's totally okay to get rid of the things that people will look at you crazy for for getting rid of when I was, I, I threw away all of my family memory um, albums, every photo album that we had. I even got rid of Summer's, Summer's photo album. I can't carry around. I had a box of memories 
just from summer no i had like a photo album just from summer six months of life we're digital now got to figure out the digital thing back up the pictures a million different ways but i'm not carrying around a box of memories and the reality is i had a bunch of photo albums full of family and full of people that if i needed anything from them i couldn't call them i'm carrying around photo albums of people that don't have my phone number when they had my phone number, they didn't call me. And you only be in my story views to see if I'm still doing well. And yeah. I'm doing wonderful. So I'm carrying around photo albums of people that needed money. And when I tried to put them onto an opportunity, they left me on scene. I'm carrying around photo albums of people that told me that I didn't make it. I'm carrying around photo albums of people that essentially stole from me you know what i'm saying so it's okay go into the stole from me because i know what you're talking about about the elephant aspect but it's important for people to understand that because it's going to speak to the laws really quickly as well okay i'm going to touch on it here i'm going to touch on it really quick here long story short i told you guys about the elephants the elephants are just like a a known fact in my family about my grandmother loved elephants she had hella and the reality is when you don't really have too many accomplishments in life and there isn't really, you know, money to be dispersed around when you pass away and you really only have a few treasured items, jewelry and statues, it's like people want to hold on to it. I'm, I'm being very straightforward right because I know that somebody else is healing, whether they watch it today or another day. Somebody's healing is in direct correlation of me sharing this story. So... You know, when my grandmother passed away, it kind of was a thing. Like, I, she, I don't think she had a will. I don't know if she had a written will. I'm not really sure. But it was just understood that when she passed away, her jewelry and her elephants were mine. It was just kind of understood. She told me when she passed away, she wanted me to have all of her elephants. She wanted me to have all of her jewelry. This isn't written in stone anywhere. It's just understood. I'm going to go in here and get my stuff. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. It was like experiencing human behavior is so interesting because it was like as soon as she passed you know people wanted to people wanted to grab hold of those treasured promising. items so like it would be like an individual like oh hey can i get an elephant sounds very very stupid and that's how it was so easy for me to release um material items like these you would think that these elephants were worth millions of dollars and the like I said, them. right. And like I said, it's highly likely that these elephants could have been from the dollar store. You know what I'm saying? Some of them were very, very nice and heavy, but you can really carry around stuff that you think has so much value and it really doesn't. And of course, you know, sentimental has a place as a higher value, blah, blah. <sighs> to speak on this really quickly, because I don't even really want that floating in the atmosphere, a particular <laughs> individual that had possessions of. A particular individual that had possessions of some of my grandmother's elephants when I said like you know my grandma told me that these were mine I want my elephants the response was oh you can have them when you buy a house in that instance and I'm sharing this to release from somewhere in that instance I said okay give me six months first of all I've grown so much from the person that responded that way First of all, my desire isn't to have a house. So you're basically telling me that something that has something that someone who has passed on told me was mine, that they wanted me to have it. You're going against the laws and trying to hold on to something that's not yours and trying to challenge me. Hmm. This is why you have to release and this is why there's a season of separation there's some people that as much as they love you or as much as they want to tell you that they love you there's some people that just don't deserve a place in your life if i can be totally honest i gotta be totally honest you know the season of separation can be challenging because it's hard to cut off people that tell you that they love you it's really hard to cut off people that tell you that they love you because you feel like you could be doing something wrong but the question is does the person that you know you need to cut off, do they make you feel like they love you? Or are they just telling you they love you? Because the person that I'm sharing this with is is released from my life with wow. love. But this is also the same person that told me that I didn't make it because I was living with my mom. So, 
So I'm basically just I'm basically just sharing that the laws don't like that. Like holding on to items that were owed to me but saying you can have them when you get a house and it's like it's really a sad thing because we're sharing with you guys why we love hotel living yeah of course we'll buy homes and all of that in the future but um that was just an, an interesting experience so i just i just um pray strength over everyone that's watching this that needs to go, needs to embark on this season of separation journey because it's not easy but you get used to it you really get used to it. Everyone has to do it, you know. You know, for some people it might be your mama, for some people it might be your daddy, for some people it might be your twin brother. You know, for some people, you know, it might be your previous upline from your last concept. You know, for some people it might be, you know, a, a particular cousin that was dark skinned and hated on you because he was light skinned. You know what I'm saying? And and I kind of gotta go there because that be it. Family. Generational trauma is an interesting thing. Oof. Oof. Family crap and generational curses, it is deep. It is deep. Oh, my gosh. I just, like, really hope that everybody gets that healing in this lifetime to just cut the cords, to just cut the generational curses. It can end with you. Like, it can so end with you. It can so end with you. It can end with you. You can make a decision that you you want to end the light skin, dark skin crap and in it can your be family. Over right now. It can. It's over right now. When you step over. out of the three D, when you step out of the competition realm, people got issues. Like people really, 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 really have issues. I can't even believe that that exists in real life. I can't even believe you know even the other half of it. You know, being African and uh, having to deal with bleach and cream. And even having to bleach myself, or even be, even be, uh, yes, a, 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 a co <laughs> coerced to, to bleach myself because I was too dark. Damn, you gotta get your healing, yo. Yeah, you gotta get your healing. I know that, you know, what we're talking about, everybody yeah. can't relate to, but there's something that you gotta heal from. It might not be, it might not be, you gotta Mama. heal from the bleach. Yeah, you gotta heal from the it might not be that you, you might not be able to relate to the light skin, dark skin thing. I don't know. You might not have to relate to how hubby said the skin bleaching thing. Set yourself free. Like, set yourself free. I really like to think of it as your human family. Like, when you really start to think about the fact that, like, our human bodies and our human flesh is simply a rented vehicle for our soul. And, you know... Yeah, just kind of thinking, like, when you realize that it's just you're a soul in this body. Having a human experience. Having a human experience. And it's human as a mug. <laughs> the family, the physical family that you're born into, I want to learn more. This is something that I'm going to be learning more. Like, what is a correlation? Like, is there a correlation with the spiritual that's, that's inside of the human bodies? Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm like, y'all just some... some flesh and bones I, namaste and i salute the divinity in you what does namaste mean to a new person like my soul sees your soul and that's why i came back and said i salute the divinity in you i can literally salute the fact that god is inside of you as he is inside of me and um i see that there's god in there in you, you got to see the god in everybody because it's like when you realize that everybody has God inside of them, you have so much grace. When you see people acting out of their God being, when you mm. see people acting in a way that doesn't demonstrate the God in them, so when you see people acting more 3D than 5D, it's like, okay. Meaning more competition, versus meaning more one. cause and effect versus more oneness versus more love versus more unity. Right. When you realize that, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? I basically was saying you're able to have so much grace on them and say, okay, like, I know it's a God inside of you somewhere, baby. You just haven't tapped into it just yet. And I love you. Like, I love you. Me not loving on you is not going to 
better you. It's not going to make you better. Our job is to make sure that every single human encounter that we have, every person that we cross paths with, we leave them a little bit better than they were before they cross paths with us in hopes that maybe they'll say, wow, there was really a certain glow on them. Like I really could see some some light around them like I really can see the God inside of them maybe it'll spark them maybe it'll spark in so- mm-hmm. something inside of them to say how can I be like that that's what it really means to when they see me they see God not that you see some white guy in a picture that <laughs> was sold at Dollar Tree man that that Ooh. that you can look at me and it can be a mirror of the God that is on the inside of you right now. Watch your neck. I know. I know it feels like you stepped on your neck. I know it feels like you stepped on your neck. But. But like you gotta, you know, it, it, it it's some information that can attack the belief system that you were born into. You know, which is how it can be easy to jump off of a lot like this. It can be easy to say, you know, what do you mean? You know, as it pertains to uh, the reference of the God on the inside of you versus the outer. But all I can tell you is to search. All I can tell you is to seek. Um, And all I can tell you is that my life changed. Our life changed, right? December 2020, when we decided, not even decided, when we understood that God is on the inside of me. I am God, and I shouldn't be afraid of saying that. I shouldn't be afraid of, uh, ooh, girl, you need a pamper. You need a shower. Ooh. (laughs) But I shouldn't be afraid of that, though. I shouldn't be afraid to, you know, see myself as a God. And what, what happens, unfortunately, is, you know, a lot of people get the battery in their back that gasses them up, that makes them afraid to speak like that. So in turn, you move like a peasant. So in turn, you attract what peasants attract, which is lack and luster versus abundance. And you're wondering, how come I'm not living the abundant lifestyle? Why am I not getting what it is that I want? It's because you, you're not seeing yourself as abundant now because you let somebody lie to you and say that you are not God, but in turn, you are the God. It's the difference between waiting for the magical God in the clouds to answer your prayers. It's it's the matter of waiting for that rather than making the decision today to say, I can create my own reality. And the way and the proof of that, the proof of that is document what your life is like for thirty days with a negative mindset. If like literally, if you're negative for thirty days, look up at what your life is. Look up at the encounters that you have, the encounters with the people that you see, your work, your experience when you clock into work every day. It's really the difference between having an enjoyable life, and then document how you feel after being at least positive, at least trying to be positive about what you see for thirty days. You create your reality. If you act negative. If you're negative for 30 days, you're going to look up and you're going to see the practical means of negativity. Mm-hmm. Your life is going to suck. The, all of your customer your service encounters, be funny as hell. your money's going to be funny because money does not attract to that. Money only vibrates on the same frequency of God and love. And you're just going to be sad. Like people are going to not be nice to you out in public. You know, you're going to have bad experience. Your food is always going to be messed up. And then if you make a decision, okay, I create the life that I see in front of me and I create my encounter. So what does that mean? I have to put effort into being what other people want to see and experience. I have to be a pleasant person in this in this society. I have to, yeah. When you're positive for 30 days and you look up, you'll say, wow, that's what I created. That's the proof of you have the ability to create to create what's in front of you. If you don't have everything that you desire, you have some work to do. That's why there's things that, you know, we've attracted this lifestyle that we have thus far, but I can acknowledge and say, you know, there's another level to this. 
there's some other things that I want. It's another level. There's Jump another level in the chat if you're following Another follow level. It's another, another level. level. There's levels to this. It's so level. while we are beyond, beyond happy and grateful that we went from trying to figure out how to pay a twelve hundred dollar a month rent to now living a lifestyle that costs at least six thousand dollars a month. And, on, and that's on a slight scale. That's if we stay at a really chill, low-key um, Hampton Inn, A-Loft, you know. And we're excited to grow with you guys, like we were saying at the beginning of this video. We're really excited to show you guys how to stay at the Waldorf Astorias of Beverly Hills with the Rolls-Royce transportation. Because that's what you guys are going to see next from us. And we're going to show you exactly how to do it. We've been talking about the Hilton points and rewards and how to get free, free nights and rooms and things like that. But, um... We're really grateful for where we are right now, but there's definitely other levels of where we're trying to be, and that's why we're growing so hard, because we understand we don't have to pray to the God in the clouds in the sky that's up in distant heaven, because heaven is inside of you, ding, ding, ding. You don't have to pray and wait for the God outside of you to answer your prayers. It doesn't have to take 30 days. It doesn't have to take 10 years. You're in control. The moment that you decide to change yourself, what you start to see around you is going to change. If you've been following us on our YouTube, we've shown you, we showed you guys how we were having horrible customer service experiences and things like that. And we made the decision to say, we're having terrible customer service experiences because we need to grow more. So, you know, honestly, the moment that we decided to say, we're going to have those experiences as long as we don't do the work that we need to do. We are, our, our, our experiences instantly changed. Now, don't get me wrong. Life just gets lifey and things still happen. But again, you have the ability to change your environment. So, for example, we just checked out a double tree. It absolutely sucked. Like, it really, really sucked. We had a couple Overall. of rent. Okay, yeah. Over, there were some pros and cons. It didn't absolutely suck but i understand why for for the sake of the context so go ahead the fact that we're so positive can really yes huh you want to get in the bathtub sit up you're gonna fall come here come here okay nobody taking your little fake cry seriously I don't know where she established that. Okay. We're going to let y'all go, though. Yeah, we've been on here rapping, talking for a very long time. Um, You're not even crying. Look at me. Look at me. You're not even crying, bro. All right. Well. So I'm not going to let her yell at y'all. But uh, we're going to jump on YouTube shortly. We're about to get ourselves together. And uh, we're going to jump on YouTube. If you caught some value from this video, definitely like this. Definitely share this. I'll go ahead and save this on the channel right now. And I'm going to see y'all at the bank.